Hey everyone, um, thanks for joining me. This is going to be the intro to Tinkercad class. Um, so basically this is a uh, class for anyone who has never used Tinkercad before. Um, so we're really gonna dive into the basics, the interface, um, everything except for the design work. So this is not a class where we'll go over any designing. We'll, it will just familiarize you um, with all you need to know in Tinkercad. Um, so, jumping right in, um, so I'm going to share my screen so that you can see my screen. Okay. Okay, so this is the Tinkercad interface. So everyone at this point should have signed up for a Tinkercad account. It's a free account through Autodesk. Um, it's tinkercad.com. Um, and if you haven't, uh, go ahead and stop this video and go ahead and um, get yourself signed up. Uh, you will need Tinkercad to model and to follow along. Um, okay, so basically this is your main interface um, and this is has all of your designs that you can see here. Um, and so to create a new design, click the create new design button and this will now take you into the main interface for Tinkercad. So a couple of things um, and you can just really follow along right now um, or just sort of watch and I will tell you when to start um, modeling with me. Um, but I'm just going to kind of walk you through the interface. So first thing uh, that you could do is rename your file. So I'm going to write intro to Tinkercad. Um, this is really the name of your file. So the way that Tinkercad works is everything that you do in this interface um, is saved uh, in an ongoing way. So you don't ever have to hit save. Um, it's You can just close it out. If you ever want to go back to your main menu, just click the Tinkercad logo up in the upper left-hand corner. Um, but really, this, this is your workspace and it's going to ongoing sort of save your work. So a few things to navigate. Um, so unlike other 3D modeling softwares, this software um, only has really this one viewport or work plane. You can see work plane down here. And so the way that you can think of this is you're sort of, you have the perspective of a camera and you're looking sort of down at a, at a work plane, which is this blue grid right here. So a few things about, um, moving within the interface. So using your mouse, and you need to have a freestanding mouse, not the touchpad on your laptop. Um, and the mouse needs to have two buttons and a scroll wheel. Um, and I'll, you'll quickly <laughs> learn why. So um, to move around, there's a couple different ways of moving within 3D space. Um, so one of those ways is called rotating. So rotating is sort of like a lazy Susan action where you're rotating your work plane around like a central um, axis. So to rotate, I'm going to right click my mouse and hold and I'm just dragging. So my mouse is just, cursor is just dragging across the screen and you can see that I'm rotating uh, and I'm holding the right mouse button right now. So that's called rotation. Um, to scroll or zoom in and out, that's sort of an obvious one. So your scroll wheel, you'll zoom in, scroll forward, or pull uh, the scroll wheel backwards to zoom out. Um, so so uh, why don't everyone go ahead and try that? Um, so zooming in, zooming out, and then again, the rotation was right click and hold to rotate your work plane. So then, there's one third um, navigation that you'll want to know, and that's called panning. And panning can be a new one for people, um, but you can think about panning as um, sliding something across the table or um, you know, moving it in and out of view. And it's different in rotation in that you're actually moving the work plane from side to side or forward and back. So to do that, it's the same mouse controls as rotation, um, except that you're holding shift on your keyboard. So I'm gonna hold shift, I'm going to right click and hold, and now that what was a rotational movement before is now moving my work plane side to side or up and down or forward and back. So go ahead and just try that. So letting go of shift, right click and hold, I rotate. Holding shift, 
right click and hold, I'm panning. So those are the three types of motions that you'll want to get comfortable with. Um, and go ahead and pause this if you need to, to kind of get comfortable. Um, it can be a new, um, a new sort of uh, thing for anyone who hasn't worked in 3D space, um, where you are getting used to um, mouse control with your right hand and then keyboard control with your left hand. Um, and then also just going back and forth between your uh, left and right uh, clicking on your right hand. So it's don't, don't feel bad if you're like, this is super weird. It's super weird for everybody when you first get started. Um, so this is kind of why you're taking this introduction so that you can um, get used to that. So rotate, zoom in and out, and then pan. Yep. Okay. So jumping in to other, other features of this interface. So as you're getting started, um, if you're working in Tinkercad and you're starting to get lost um, or you find yourself suddenly upside down underneath your work plane and you're like, oh, I don't, I'm not, this is crazy. I, or you're like, your work plane's over here and you can't figure out what's going on. Um, and it's just a little bit too much to handle. Um, I want to point you to the orientation cube. Um, and so, as I'm rotating my work plane, you can see this cube up here is moving with my work plane. That cube is locked to your work plane. And so if you feel like you haven't totally gotten a hold of the mouse controls, you can also left click and drag this. You can see where I've clicked, it's highlighting blue. So I can say, I wanna go to a bird's eye view, top view, boom, top view. I want to navigate to the right side boom, right side. Or you can just click and drag and you can see how your work plane moves with you. So if this is like an easier way to visualize or to get comfortable with 3D space, that's totally fine. If you're ever like, oops, I'm super lost. I'm just panicking right now. You can also hit the home button and it will zoom you right to that original um, kind of up uh, downward perspective view. Um, you can also zoom in and zoom out. That Remember, we did scroll wheel forward, scroll wheel back. You can also zoom in sort of incrementally with this plus and zoom out with this minus button. So that's a way also to navigate. Um, and then um, I'm just going to show you what this next command does. Don't worry about that. You don't have to put that box there. Um, but again, if you're like stuck way out here and you don't know how to get back, there, you can also um, click on this fit all in view, and that will zoom you forward and zoom into your box. Now, you can see that I'm still underneath my work plane, um, so it doesn't totally orient you. You might want to use home to then sort of just reset yourself, um, and then you could zoom in with fit all in view. Um, if I have multiple items, you'll notice what happens is I'm selected. Let me um, unselect those and show you. So now it's going to try and show you both items. So fit all in view really means I'm going to scroll, I'm going to zoom in to um, capture all, all objects on your work plane. Okay, I'm going to delete this for now. Um, I'm not going to go too much through orthographic view. We will probably look at that in some of the classes, but um, until you have some work. Uh, on your work plane, some geometry in your work plane, it's, it's a little, sort of hard to understand what this is for. So we'll get there later. Um, okay, so a few other things. Um, so right now, this grid is in millimeters. Um, that's the default setting. So I'm just gonna zoom in so that you can see the grid. So the grid has a dark blue line and then these lighter uh, blue boxes or lines. So this is the dark blue lines are one centimeter. Um, and so there are then 10 millimeter boxes in each of the one centimeter grids. Um, so if you would like to change that, if you're like, I do not know <laughs> millimeters at all, I'm an inches per person, that's fine. Um, I'll just show you that again. So I clicked edit grid. 
and it's going to sh show you the current grid properties. So you can see the default is millimeters. You can change it to inches. Um, ignore bricks. That's uh, we're not going to be dealing with that, and that's sort of more for kids. Um, it's a different environment. Um, so inches and millimeters, you can choose. Um, just a warning: I will be working in millimeters. Um, that's what I've always worked in. I'm most comfortable there. So um, you will have to do a little bit of conversion if you're following along. Um, uh, so I would recommend at least learning the software and learning the classes, uh, going through the classes with me in millimeters, and then you can always um, sort of go off on your own and work in inches. Um, so the, uh, width and length, um, this means the um, work plane size. So that blue grid um, has 200 millimeters in the width and 200 millimeters in the length or 20 by 20 centimeters. Um, so feel free to change that if you have something, you know, if you're like, oh, I'm making a tiny item. So maybe, um, you know, let's try this 100 and change this. Ooh. Maybe 100 by 100, and you can see my work plane just shrink. Um, so I'm going to go back to the default, so we all look the same. Okay, so that's how you how you change that. So Snap Grid, um, we will likely get to this as well. Um, I can show you quickly what that what that means. Um, you can just kind of watch this. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, since I haven't written all the classes yet, if we will um, do much revision of SnapGrid, but just so you know. So you can see that when I've placed my box somewhat arbitrarily on the work plane, if I select it and I start dragging to move it, you can see how it's snapping. It's sort of like clicking. It's not a smooth movement. It's a jittery movement. Um, and what that's doing is um, it's restraining the movement in one millimeter increments. It's snapping the object to the grid in one millimeter increments. So down here, you can see one millimeter. If I change this to five millimeters, watch what happens. Now it's snapping me in five millimeter increments, even more sort of jittery. Um, if I turn this off, now I have totally smooth um, movement. So there are pluses and minuses to this. Well, really, there's there's only pluses to this. Um, basically, this helps you, um, uh, you know, move in increments. Um, if you know that you've got to um, sort of hit a certain location um, and, uh, without getting too deep into it. Um, this can be very handy once you get into some more of the advanced um, uses of Tinkercad, which we may or may not jump into uh, in the five-week classes. So leaving that as one millimeter for now. Okay. So a couple things. I'm just going to reset myself with the home button. Um, so before we dive in um, to the classes, I just want to get you familiar with the different shapes menu. So most of what we're going to be working in will be in this basic shapes menu. And this menu is driven by Autodesk, by the creators of Tinkercad. Um, it really doesn't change. Um, I think some shapes have been added, but really um, it's, it's sort of like your foundation of modeling. There are other shapes here. Um, I would say um, text and numbers, characters, connectors, anything under basic shapes is really um, not going anywhere. Um, we then have circuits, which we're not going to really deal with um, some existing um, uh, files, mesh files that you could that you could leverage, which we're not really as well. Um, really, we're going to be in the um, uh, basic shapes menu for the most of, most of the time. Um, so we'll show some of the um, work plane ruler, how to imp well, how to export at least if you're going to fabricate. I'll show you that as we're getting going in the classes. Um, but I want to sort of just make sure uh, that you're comfortable with how you actually manipulate shapes or how you um, work with uh, pieces of geometry. So just turning my page here. OK, so go ahead and watch this and then um, I'll sort of cue you when you can pause to try something out. So just dealing with these basic shapes. Um, so, so in the menu to grab objects, um, we're going to single click it. You don't have to hold, um, see, hands-free. Um, 
you basically, when I've clicked the box, the box will now stick to my cursor and it's trying to now, now I'm just sort of dropping it where I want. So I can, again, just single left click to drop it in place. And you'll notice that this box has affected by gravity, which this work has. So I didn't just drop in the air, I dropped it and it fell to the work plane. So the, you can think of the work plane as having, um, or being sort of like your floor. Um, so about this box, right now it's just, I'm not doing anything to really just rotating my plane and the boxes is coming along for the ride. If I single click and uh, I select the box, you can see that the box is selected because of this blue highlight board on the edge of it. You can also see that it's selected because this shape menu pops up. And this shape menu will, will be a little different depending on which shape you're using. Um, the common features are that um, there will be this little lock, this little light bulb. Um, we'll go how to use those when we get into the classes themselves. Um, but basically, you can imagine this locking um, the object can't be edited and hiding it. Um, but we'll go through that. The other features that are common for all shapes are solid and whole. So you can see right now that solid is highlighted with that similar blue box. If select whole, now you can see this has changed. Um, and so I'll, I'll quickly show you what um, that exactly means. And we'll, of course, dive into this a lot more um, once we get in the classes. But so I'll just drop another box. What overlap them is a whole, one of them is a solid. So you don't have to do this. I just want to show you what, why. Uh, you would use whole versus solid. So if I select the two of them, I now have two shapes selected, and I group them. Again, don't follow, you don't have to do this, just follow along. Um, if I group them, now you can see that the whole has disappeared, but it has cut out from the, the solid box. And so this is really the basis of 3D modeling um, in Tinkercad and really in all 3D modeling softwares. Um, you're using primitive shapes and customized pieces of geometry to add or subtract material from each other. Um, and so that's really what uh, we're going to be doing is uh, in, in this class is utilizing all of these basic shapes, or, or a few of these basic shapes at least, to create pieces of jewelry by adding and subtracting pieces of geometry together. So I'm just going to undo that, delete this, and kind of go back to show you uh, keep going with this with this box. So that is solid versus whole. You can also change the color um, if you want to see it in a different color. That really is just for viewing on screen. It serves no other purpose. Um, but what I do want to get you familiar with, and this is what you will want to kind of um, practice and sort of get comfortable with before you start with one of my classes, because um, I won't be diving into all of this again. Um, I'm showing it to you here and now. So when I click on the shape, you will see that it's highlighted. And you will also see that there's all these different little like features that have popped up. So when I hover over these white or hollow boxes, you can see that there are some dimensions that come up, 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. If I hover on this one, the height of the box is 20 millimeters. So the, the ways that you can change the size, the shape, the proportions of these objects is you can click, so I'm left click, holding and I'm dragging and you can see the dimension is counting down or counting up as I drag. Um, you can do that with any of these hollow boxes and I, you can move it all over the place. Like it's very free to move it. So go ahead um, and pause this and just try that a little bit. So then you can also change the, the size of the sh or the shape by manually keying in these different dimensions. So right now my box is 16 by 15. I can change it to 10 by, was rotation, by 10. 
So go ahead and you can change any, any area that uh, a dimension shows, you can manually change that. So what I'm actually doing right now is I'm clicking to highlight. When I hover and don't click over the hollow box, the dimension shows up for a little while. When I move, it goes away. So to lock that in for a couple of seconds, you click it and now see it's there, but watch, it will disappear um, on its own after a while. So you have like a small window that you've sort of frozen the dimension um, to be edited. So just keep that in mind if you're like, I keep clicking it, but then it goes away. You just need to move a little faster, I guess. Um, so go ahead and also pause this now um, and try to uh, change the dimension of this box by keying in these numbers um, so that you can get a sense of the other ways that you can change the size in the box. OK, so I'm just going to kind of get this a little bigger just so that we can re. And you can see that I'm also, I've just grabbed one of these black boxes or solid boxes. Um, and that restrains my movement in that direction um, versus the corner hollow box. I can move in all directions. Um, when I grab a black box, I can only move it in one direction, no matter where my mouse goes. So different ways to size. Um, OK, so that's the basis of sizing um, of these objects. So another feature is moving or dragging. So you saw how you could drag this. I'm just single left click and holding the object, and I'm moving around. And you'll see these little numbers um, popping up. And this is, can be a little confusing. Um, what this is is. I'll just show you right now. So I single click, I start dragging. This is telling me how many increments, in this case, our increment is one millimeter, how many millimeters I've moved this box from where it was when I first started moving it. So this is relative movement or relative motion. So if I click again and I start moving again, it starts from zero, negative three, negative three, or I go, positive three, four, five, six, seven. So it's a little bit, um, it's useful in some cases, but it can be a little awkward to get used to. Um, you can just ignore it also. We mostly won't be using that feature. Another way to move, um, I had mentioned before that the box drops using gravity, drops to the work plane. If you want to lift the box, you can grab this arrow and you can lift it and you see that dimension showing up. It's now saying I am nine millimeters lifted into the air. And when you do that, you can see the little shadow, like a little hot air balloon. Um, and you can actually see that my box is now hovering nine millimeters off the, off the work plane. Um, so don't worry. And you can also dive below the work plane, which is always super crazy. Um, yeah, so don't worry about whether it's like on the work plane. I'll show you some tips on how to like work with moving things in space as well. Um, okay, and the last point uh, to note about editing these objects is rotational. So there are these little um, gray arcs over here. And these gray arcs are ways to rotate this object on these different axes. So this one, you can see kind of, it gives you like a little guide, a little like cheat for how it's gonna rotate. So this one, if I click and drag, I'm rotating around this sort of dial right here. I'm just gonna hit undo, control Z, typical undo. I can also try it in the other direction. So you can see how I'm rotating, right? Um, so anywhere where these, these little arcs and the little dial that pops up will allow you to rotate. So about the dial, I'm just going to zoom in. So the dial has um, these little like notches in them. And so those those top notches, um, the light gray uh, increments, those are degrees. So rotating um, in numbers of degrees. So you can actually see, oh, sorry, those are five degree increments. Um, so you can see I'm, as I'm rotating, it's rotating in one degree increments, but then every time I hit the gray, that's five, right? So five, 10, 15. If I hold shift, so now I've just 
hit the shift button, you can see how the dial changes. I'm now restricted to 45 degree in increments. So that can be helpful if you're trying to move, rotate your object like 90 degrees or 45 degrees, which I'm sure we're going to be doing a lot of that in the classes. So just get used to that. Um, so those are really the, the key ways that you will move objects. Um, so go ahead and um, take a little bit of time, um, get familiar, you know, practice, um, you know, moving things around uh, in, in 3D space, get comfortable with this interface. Um, and basically, once you feel pretty comfortable, um, jump on into one of the classes and then we will basically pick up from right here um, and, and dive into the design of a specific object, which you'll have plenty of opportunities to customize for yourself. Um, so yeah, in the meantime, feel free to um, reach out and uh, message me if you have any questions um, on Instagram. Um, my um, Instagram handle is Liz Hill Weicker um, with underscores in between. So Liz underscore Hill underscore Weicker. Um, okay. Look forward to teaching all of you. Bye.